The second episode is a different ballpark. In our game, you're introduced to new mechanics. Instead of killing walkers in the cutscenes or quick time events, you can shoot and attack them in a Resident Evil type style. Telltale did something similar in the last game about The Walking Dead, but this one will be a little bit more interactive, like you're actually playing a game instead of just to set up quick time events. One other thing that has introduced is a morality system that tracks your decisions, kinda like a karma system. The morality or karma system won't be one note, like all the characters won't just agree with what you did was bad or whatever. No, characters opinions can vary and people can either love you or hate you due to how your morality is or karma. The story of the game starts off like usual. You meet up with Ben and his teacher and his friend. Of course, this is the part of the game where you either have to cut off his leg or leave the teacher behind. If you leave the teacher behind, Ben's friend goes out to Mark's gun and shoots the boy resulting in you guys taking him back to his camp, leaving the teacher to die. Otherwise, if you take the teacher, the friend gets left to die. In our imaginary game, there's another choice. You can actually choose to leave Ben's friend and the teacher behind. As you guys run away, we hear the sound of multiple gunshots firing. We get back to the camp where you bring the injured NPC to Katra, and of course Kenny and Lily start to argue about who's in charge of the group. And depending on our choices from the last episode, there will be a little bit bias on both characters. In our game, if you choose to get on Kenny's good side, he will push for you. Not only that, but if you manage to get on Kenny's good side in our game, he'll be a little bit more accepting of Lily's points if you agree with them. Like, he won't be so hostile against Lily acting like this because you agree to it, and you're one of the more logical thinking characters in the group. If you side with Lily though, Lily would be pushing for you instead, resulting in Kenny not being so accepting of you and Lily. This is the part of the game where you decide who gets food and who doesn't. Now the mechanic of this part stays the same for the most part, except depending on who you side with can have a significant effect on how they aren't picked or picked. Like, if you become friends with Larry, then he'll be more understanding with you not giving him more food. After the events of Ben revealing to the group that the bite doesn't kill you, the St. John's appear. But in our game, Lee can actually adventure out of the safe zone and look around the place. You see, when talking about playing an adventure game, there's something that needs to be in place. One is the story and the second is the adventure. In the original game, we really didn't get to adventure around the game to see what had happened in the world. In our game, I propose that we allow the player character to venture into several places at this time. The woods, a small town, and the motel. Similar to how Fallout 1 and 2 worked, we get back to the St. John's, who give you the offer. In the original game, you weren't given a choice in the matter. Even within the early stages of the game, you weren't really controlling what happens. But in our game, you can actually choose to turn down the offer and open up a new set of events that happen. But we'll get into those choices later. So anyways, our main characters get to the farm where most of the events from the original game are in the new game, except one part. You and Mark are fixing up the fences, walkers will sometimes get trapped in the wires, and you and Mark will need to get them out. You come across one that manages to knock the fence over. You and Mark climb over the knocked over structure, picking up the walker and moving the fence up. And depending on certain choices you made in the past, the fence doesn't turn on. You and Mark go back to the St. John's. Or depending on your choices, it does turn on and the original scene from the game plays out. With the group at the farm, the game plays like normal again. We get to the dinner scene, where the group and the St. John's are at dinner together. Depending on your choices, Mark is also there and well. Lee goes upstairs to wash his hands and finds a horrible scene. Lee. Don't eat dinner. <laughs> In the original game, Mark is the one who's cannibalized, and that can't change. In early versions of the game, the teacher was actually the one that got cannibalized. In our game, it depends on if you left the teacher and the student behind. If you didn't leave them behind and took one of them with you, the St. John's wouldn't have any meat. Thus, they would be banking on one of you getting injured in order for them to cut pieces from Mark. But, if you left them behind, the St. John's would have taken them instead, meaning that they wouldn't have to take any of your group members in such a quick fashion. If you leave them both behind, the teacher and student have had both of their legs chopped off and fed to you. Depending on your choices, Kenny, Lily, Larry, and Clementine are stuck in the fridge. You guys escape, kill off the family, and leave the farm. Scarred. Well, remember the choice earlier in our game where we actually got to choose whether or not we stayed? 
Well, let's go back to that because it will diverge to another plot line that we can explore. You and your group are pissed that you made the call to stay at the motel. No one is happy and they don't understand why you did it in the first place. What happened next changes everything. Save lost bandits, attack your camp, and try to steal your supplies until you mention the farm. They reveal that the St. John's in there made a pact and that they didn't honor it, so they're stealing from you now. Since you were Mark were in the camp and checked the perimeter, you guys are the perfect candidates to help with the raid at the farm. Many games about the Axe survival say that there are no good people, just people trying to survive and get by. But sometimes you're dragged into a conflict that ends up getting people hurt without your volition. Although some games in this genre don't really make it seem that way, you can draw a clear distinction from Lee's group and the Save Lots Bandits. Lee's group is good, Save Lots Bandits is bad. But with this new mission added to our made up game, it makes you really question if Lee's group is as good as they are. Since it isn't revealed until later that the family was ruthless, at this point, Lee and Mark are being sent out to kill an innocent family in the country trying to live this thing out. It makes you really question who the real bad guys are. One thing we can't forget is the car scene. What happens during this scene is that your group comes across a car and you're given the choice to steal from it, thinking it was abandoned. No matter what side you choose, the group eventually steals from it. This scene goes down in our game as well, whether you stay at the farm or with the Save Lost Bandits. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you like any more of my content, subscribe.